Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Before you sit down, just say to a neighbor, it's already done. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And he reaches to the high, highest mountain. See, y'all sang the new version. And it flows oh, oh, to the lowest valley. Oh, I know the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will Now clap your hands and say it'll never lose its power. And it reaches to the high, highest mountain. And it flows to the lowest, to the lowest. gives me strength. All right, y'all sit. I ain't playing. Yes, Lord. I said, yes, Lord. Now the uh, chief apostle told you it's going to come in waves. Yeah. And he said, when it comes, don't resist. Everybody's been watching this movie called Deliverance. But I got two words to say to that for those who know the devil's a liar. Just jump up and say, the blood! blood. Yeah, that's the thing the devil can't put up with. I know y'all waiting on music. Everybody talking about portals. Just plead the blood. Y'all quiet on this side and it reaches to the highest mountain. You see, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. We needed something to make us go back to remembering what we were called to do. These signs shall follow them, y'all quiet now, that believe in my name First thing they shall do is cast out devils. Oh uh, yeah, some of y'all in the front row looking mundane. Maybe you got a title but ain't got no power. But I'm telling you, there's power, power, wonder working in the blood. In the, the Holy Ghost is here in the blood of the Lamb. Be seated in the presence of God. I want to give honor before I take off because I'm already there. The choir sang me there. It's hard to come down and go back upstairs. Oh, the devil is a liar. I want to show you something. Can I? I want to let you be a little nosy. Come here. I was in my room and I wrote a new sermon. And I didn't know why God told me to say the first part that I'm going to say. And then you got up. And you said something like, you're going to need both hands. going to have keys in one. 
Y'all forgot what he said that quickly? And the Bible said, out of two and three mouths, every word is established. That's a, that's your holy convocation, Dr. Kevin Williams. That's mm -hmm. your holy convocation, so I don't preach it twice when I come back. <laughs> Getting old, so I got to mark where I'm preaching. My sermon is here, but what I have to say is in green. Now, I'm going to read it. Okay. This is not for everyone. This is for about 200 of you who will go off in God and believe it. The Lord said, before you preach, tell those who are present, there is a season of financial freedom coming to every... Hold on. And I'm a color type of preacher. I know you're stealing my method now because I, I see in colors. But all of that's in green, which means, green means go. It means right now. Red means it's still a little far away. I won't mention the other colors, but that's the way. There's a season of financial freedom coming to us this evening that is going to solve situations that we thought would never change. Then I wrote financial freedom. The next sentence for those who will go off, no music. We've had the music, we'll come back to it. This is now something different. I don't like when every church sound the same. There has to be a, there has to be something authentic about your personal expression. If we all shout every time a preacher get up, then that means we done did the same thing. But let me read this, because this is where God gave it to me. He says, they can't see it, but tell them there's a sound of an abundance of rain. And the Lord told me to tell 30 of you what you can see, can see you. <laughs> then he told me to tell them that hear him, I'm going to make it rain tonight. <laughs> then he gave me one order. Then I need to digress to give honor. Then I need to prophesy to two people. Then I need to read my scripture. And in that order. We must not just look like it's coming. We must sound like it's coming. When you know rain is coming, you get your umbrella out before the rain starts. The Lord told me from the book of Joshua, the old mother say Joshua, but the Lord told me this, to those who make the purest sound, you said waves would come. I saw sound, then the Lord said, put them together, that sound waves, right? We just put it together. The Lord said, tell the people this who don't have financial freedom, don't live where you want to live, don't make the resources or the salaries you want to make. He's told me to read this one scripture from Joshua. I'll give you 30 seconds to praise them, be seated, but it better be loud. The Lord said, I'll give the city only to them who shout. Shout for the Lord. The old church said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord.
That's that wave. He sends the wave, we give the sound. You may be seated. Thank you. Shalabaha. Praise him, shepherd mother. I want to quickly so that I don't lose my place in this wave. When I come back, remember I'm looking for a person with the last name H-E-R-B-I-N, like Urban. That's who I'm looking for. That's your last name? So let me give honor, then I come back to you. Is that okay? What is your first name? Micah, September 5th. All right, I'll get back to you. Now, let me give honor here first. Because um, I don't think your organization, I don't even think your church understands the magnitude of power that you walk in. I don't want you to feel bad or feel like we have to beat them because a prophet is without honor in his own country. It's a shame that God would use us more if they honored us more. But this organization called New Jerusalem Churches of Sound Doctrine has one of the baddest, most anointed, intellectual, Chosen men of God this side of heaven. You can get louder than that. God, be seated. God is not jealous of a man who gets praise but gives it back. It has to go horizontal before it goes vertical. They didn't pray to God, they prayed to the God of Abraham. They didn't pray to God first, they said the God of Isaac. Sometimes you can only get in by letting God know who your pastor is. You ain't, see, y'all don't believe it. Prove that. He said, Paul, I know. Oh, y'all, Jesus, I know. Well, who are you? What church you from? Who, who licensed you? Who, who sent you out? I think he deserves to live a full life because he took on the vision of his mother and his father and this organization is about to be 50 years old next year. This has been an organization longer than you've been married and some of you have been born. It has stood the test of time. We salute you in the name of Jesus Christ for the work that you're doing in the kingdom. Can we bless his grace, the Honorable Bishop Kevin A. Williams? I'll be right with you, Urban. Hold on. You might as well call your sister. Her name starts with an A. Alicia? All right. I, I uh, want to say, hey, listen. I'm working, then I'm going to commercial. Don't rush me. Because what I got to tell her is not more important than honoring God's people. She's getting a prophecy because she's in his house. Y'all understand the difference? All right, all right, all right. To his left is the vice. Now, I've known this man uh, 40 years. I don't know how long you've known him, but I've known him since I was in my 20s. I tried to be like him, but my money. Now, y'all laughing, but 
Bishop Wortham has looked like this forever. He's not aging. Still trying to dress like he's 40. Diamond stud glasses. What in the world? I've watched him from a distance first, then up close. He let me run a revival in his church somewhere near Ellicott City before he was blessed to do the inevitable, and that is to purchase the Palladium. That is the inevitable. The same way you build in this church and occupying it is inevitable. And I remember in that revival, a young man needed a kidney. See, he can't go back. He don't, he don't remember all the miracles. Young man needed a kidney. You had a woman directing the choir named Carol. She was a light-skinned woman. And then Yvette Bush, we called her Talia. See? Mm -hmm. And I ran the revival, and I told this young boy who was skinny and dark-skinned, you're going to live, and God going to give you a kidney. This is in the 90s. I thought... God was going to put him on the kidney list and let somebody call him and say, we got a match for you. Oh, no, no. The doctor came to church where the paper said, I needed to see this person because I know we took a kidney out, but there's a baby kidney trying to grow in this man's body. Now, that, now, some of you will never believe it because you weren't born at the right time. I'm not lying. People were getting cured of AIDS and there was no tonic. Blind eyes was opening. People were at the altar. They were parked down to a dead end street. We couldn't even turn the cars around. We needed security. But this man did not question the power of God. Never ever said negative things about preachers that I know of. He is one of the most legends of our day. He is also the vice bishop of the New Jerusalem sound doctrine. Bishop, come on, scream, Earl Wortham. Now I'm going to give honor to two more people. Then the rest can just say, you forgot me. But one of the greatest preachers in the world that's upcoming has been here fellowshipping with you all, all week. Come on, don't act like you don't know him. Some of you ain't clapping because you ain't been here all week, but we talking about... I just left his first holy convocation. He just became a bishop in the Lord's Church last year. Well-deserved. I preached for him, but this man, without a doubt, if he stays on the path that he is on, will be one of the most powerful preaching voices of our day, Bishop Tim Newton Sr. Can y'all scream for him? And last but not least for now, the preacher I'm going to mention, you've never heard preach, but he mine and he bad. He's a bad boy. He grew up in the apostolic church. We both grew up in Roosevelt. I'm several years older than him, but I've watched him grow since he was 12. We parted ways. I re-met him when he became 38, somewhere around there. He joined our fellowship. And during that time, don't take this wrong, he was too holy for me. Uh, just too much gospel in the car, too much Jesus, Jesus, praise the Lord, just too much. And I said, listen, you married? Yeah, I said, it's too much for her, just too much now. When your wife called your bishop, no, your name Keith, yo. Okay, and I teach black people how to enjoy life. But this man has his own reformation stopped it, pulled under me, and pulled his whole reformation with me as well. Most black people will never join other black people and submit in full totality. 
you are to honor my son and my first administrative assistant, Bishop Keith K. Curry, pastor of Family Worship Center in Jacksonville, North Carolina. I thank you. All right, Sister Irvin, you may be seated. How are you today? I want to say to you that if I could get eight people in your section unbiased to praise God with a certain sound, you're going to open up a boutique. Hold on, stop, stop. Because I said her section don't mean you couldn't join in, right? Selfish somebody. Now, I know y'all looking for the prophets who breathe and see angels and quicken. I'm not him. You should have caught me when I was 20. I'm in my 60s now. I'm not blowing on nobody. Did you give up that desire or do you still want it? Oh, you still want it? What did you do? Who's that holding your hand? Just a church member? Do you know her? Do y'all talk a little bit? Just at church? Well, she's praising God for you, so I want you to tell her, because she can hear me, but I want you to tell her. The keys Bishop Williams saw is the keys to your new house. I want you to tell her. And God said, ain't nothing wrong with two. You rent one and you live in the other. That's his wife? They getting more prophecies from the last time? We ain't going to let them fully take over your prophecy. So on your birthday, which just passed on yesterday, God told about five to six, seven angels. I don't know how many, but he told angels to go to work for her and clear her path. The Lord said, between now and December, all of your blessings will overtake you and make you rich. And anyone that's not jealous, make a joke. Oh. You may be seated. Whose name or last name is Logan? Who's Logan? L-O-G-A-N. Oh, she's the one running? Oh, hold on. Nicole? That's the one running behind her? You getting a new house, baby. I might as well let you know. That's the one in the front? Nicole, which one is Nicole? Run back to me. Because I'm going by what they telling me. Are you ready for everything God has for you? July 10th? That's your birthday. I want to say something to you. God wants to elevate. Now, I told y'all this is a night of financial freedom. Your credit score. Right? You would have had a lot of things, but this credit thing needs to be fixed. So God said, tell her, in 72 hours, I'm going to do my thing. Watch. Oh, I ain't hiding you can find me. I live in the Popka, Florida. Yeah. 
God says, at one time I was going to wait, but I decided not to wait on the husband. I decided that I'm going to give her everything that's hers right now. And someone with a loud sound, give it to God. You may be You may be seated. I said two and I was going to read my scripture. So let me try to do that. D-E-V-O-N-E. Who's Devon? Huh? Wanda? I'm looking for Wanda. Oh, I'm sorry. She tried to take your prophecy. She said, you missed one letter. It's I. How's it spelled? All right, that's you. Thank you. But because you were nice, and I don't mind correction. I ain't, I'm not a stuck-up prophet. You were dancing earlier up in the pulpit. Did you go to school and never finish, really? Not for what you wanted. Need you to do something while you're ushering her. Maybe somebody want to usher her. Because the Lord said while you were dancing, the loan went down to zero. No student. Someone in the front row is saying, even though I see it, I just don't believe it. So you have to keep your diabetes. It's not that God don't want to do it and it's not that you ain't saved. It's that you don't have enough honor to let him do it. It's because of your unbelief, not your doubt. They're not the same. See, everybody got quiet. Doubt and unbelief are not the same. There's some things God can bypass because of your doubt to show you he's God. But he won't bypass it for unbelief. Uh, Dr. Williams, how well do you know her? I need you to remember this for the future. With the transition that God is taking you through personally and your ministry to make it what it's going to be. I don't want to put a name on it. God says, allow no one to speak to you negatively about her. God says she's going to be one of your most awesome pastors in your organization that you've ever seen. God said, because she didn't ask for it, it's asking for her. Y'all ain't talking. And God said, I would never send you out there without a him. You will be properly protected by him. Yep. All right, All right I want you to get your Bibles. I want you to get your Bibles. Let me just say something to you indirectly, Bishop Wortham. Five to six people that don't have their own homes that got off your bus, in 21 days, they're going to have new places to live. Now, if this section don't talk to me, Where's your members? All of them that came on that bus. Everybody else sit down real quick. Stand up if you came on that bus. Now, don't y'all get mad at me. What's wrong with you? (laughs) 
not talking to all of you, but six of you. And I can call three by your name, but I won't because one would get embarrassed because you recently just got evicted. God is about to send you back from this place. And the floodgates of heaven will open beginning next week. You will get, y'all show them how to pray. What your eyes have not seen. What your ears have not heard. What has not entered into your hearts. The good thing. Are y'all standing because y'all from Baltimore too? Yes. Okay. Are they with you? I need you to do me a favor because the Lord showed me this man and I didn't think he was with you. I'm going to have you come out, walk up real quick, someone to stand behind you. When you touch him, all the wealth that you possess will start going into this man. God said this man will be a secret to recovery. This man will be a key piece to replenishing. Sir, walk up them steps. Enjoy God as you come up. I wish y'all would praise God together. Y'all got to learn how to usher like the old school. The glory of God. Somebody shout the glory of God. You may be seated. Now you that I don't prophesy to, the sermon will. I promise you, you won't skip a beat. Somebody shout glory again. Glory. Tonight, I'm Dr. Williams' property for 24 hours. That's why I'm wearing my fellowship pin. So I want to ask, can I prophesy to a few more people? I want you, when I tell you to, to be ushered up here. About time the bishop lays hands on you, your blood will switch. God says, I'm going to give your organs a revival. I wish I had a believing church. Be seated. This is very sensitive. The two people may not stand up because you may feel embarrassed, but there is no embarrassment. I need the two people in here who have a child that's in jail, in prison to stand. And there go the two I'm looking for. Hold on, I'm looking for both of you, right? How long has your child been in prison? Four months, yours, year and a half, yours. Pull that mask down and talk to me. You who I'm looking for. All three of you, I really wasn't looking for you, but we're going to include you and it's going to happen. All three of you, when I tell you, are going to come up the steps escorted by Usher. Apostle Williams is going to lay hands on you. God says, one of your children are not supposed to come out because they're guilty, but I'm going to get them out on false evidence and not a shakapatoria because they're guilty they're guilty you can be nice all you want to all three of you walk up be ushered up the steps 
God said about time he touches you and we make a sound. The Bible said at midnight when Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises, the prisoners. This is what the world needs to see. That there's power, power, wonder, working power. In the blood, boy, the choir started it. Every time he touched somebody, you ought to scream out there. Because it's your sound that's going to do the job. With my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise. With the heart of thanksgiving. Rebansu kutahaya. Let her have it. You just stay there. It's fine. This old school. This is what I grew up in. Before I read the scriptures, and I have quite a few scriptures to read, but not a lot of information to give. The power's in the text. I want you to look the left, right, or front, or behind you, whatever's most comfortable. And tell your neighbor these two words, and if they don't get excited, don't talk to them for 20 minutes straight. You laughing, but obey the prophet. Because I'm not joking. Look to the left and right and tell your neighbor, you're next. You better catch that wave. Be seated. Out of the three of you, no one has to worry about being able to afford an attorney. It's good already. The book of Daniel. The book of Daniel, have to preach this, ain't going to be long. The book of Daniel, Shakatabahaya. You that are watching by our streaming services, I pray you could feel what we feel in here. You that live across country, you should be able to feel it. God said, and he sent his word. And his word healed them. What a mighty God we serve. Can I get some help? What a mighty God. Let's rejoice for those that have been blessed because you're next on God's agenda. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel. And don't y'all die on me because I'll walk right out and go home. Daniel chapter 3. Let me give you a quick backdrop so that we can get through the suspense. And I only need three people who are really going to be authentic millionaires to talk to me through the sermon. Only three. And I promise you will become that. But listen, yes, this is about that bedtime story called the three Hebrew boys. Let's get over it. Y'all have had deep revelations and expositors and pontificators all week. I'm just going to be a dessert tonight. We're going to talk about the three Hebrew boys. Chapter number three, the reason why I'm preaching about this 
for those who name God didn't use me to call out through the gift of the word of knowledge. It's not actually prophecy. It begins as a word of knowledge. What is your name, your birthday? That's knowledge. Then the rest picks up like a good way of making a cake. It goes in the oven, you bake it, it rises, and you wait till it cool off, flip it, ice it, cut it, share it. Now, what I want to say to some of you who will scream, because I'm not calling your name, but I'm talking about you indirectly. The Lord has me preaching this last minute, because I wrote it from scratch, because whatever fiery situation you're in, you're coming out of it tonight. And you're coming out of it not smelling like you've been in it. Jesus is the rock. But for younger people tonight, do you smell what the rock is cooking? Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. The whole chapter, I had to read the entire chapter, but I'm going to cut and paste with you. But only three of you definitely will start living millionaire status after this message has been complete. Now, if it ain't you, at least hope it's your friend. If it's your friend, you can get some of it. Don't hope it's your family. Family don't share much. Huh? Family will take, but they will not give. Daniel 3, verses 10 through 17. Let me pause and digress and give honor to one of the pillars and the foundation of the New Jerusalem churches of sound doctrine, shepherd mother, Mother Williams. We love you. And you know I do. Louder than that. It's her husband who died for this. Remember that at all times. Daniel chapter 3. See, this is just his father's son. That's how the son got here, right there. All right. You got to remember the vessel. Daniel chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. I can't believe I'm going to try to read this with my glasses off. I'm going to give it a shot. Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, suck butt, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. Notice, I know y'all are not going to catch this, but one of you should scream out of my three, and that is the word music is spelled M-U-S-I-C-K. Because any music that is not giving glory to God is basically music. And some of y'all want a miracle from God playing the wrong tune. Now let me come back. Uh -uh, and, and stay, stay with me. This is my story and this is my song. Your song and your story must match. They fell down and begin to worship this golden image. And whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth, which means whoever refuses to dance to the music, he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. I know you know the story, but let me read. Verse 12, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the prophets of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They will not serve your gods. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neither shall I. Neither shall I. They won't worship the golden image which you have set up. Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, preach, Meshach and Abednego and they brought these men before the king. Now notice, he liked them. That's why he gave them power over certain parts of the kingdom. But there are some crafty people that can make people turn on you overnight, young. But that is not permission from you to leave where you are. You've got to stay till you're promoted. Uh -oh. Y'all help me, my three people. Promotion comes not from the east or the west. 
nor from the south. It comes from God and some of you don't know. You have to stay where you are belittled. Yep, front row quiet. Cast down. Misunderstood. Let me do it like the old church. Lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated, butte scorn, talked about, show your bones. Up, down, level to the ground, but as long as I've got Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, is it true? Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, little g, nor worship the golden image which I set up? Now, if you be ready, I'm going to give you another chance. Because I'm going to play my song again. And I want you to dance to the music. The Bible says, now when you're ready, the time was they heard the uh, cor cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer. They heard all kind of music. <laughs> They were supposed to fall down and worship the image which I made. That's what the king told him. He said, but if ye worship not, I'm not going to even wait till tomorrow. I'm going to fry you tonight. Y'all still not talking. It's the self-same hour I will cast you into the midst of a burning, which means you don't know how hot it is because they are using different words that mean the same thing to tell you there's no word for how hot it is. So they call it burning fiery, which fiery is burning. Furnace. And who is that God? I'm almost there. Who is that capital G God? Can I get 20 minutes to teach? Then I'll just. Who is that God? That shall deliver you out of my hand. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. We're going to keep it respectable. But we've always respected you and did what you did. We worked for you. We took whatever you took. But the biggest mistake you ever made, Nebuchadnezzar, is bringing my God into the story. Some of you that are tired can sit. You that can hang in there remain standing. You can talk about me as much as you please. Just don't bring my God. Let me get ferocious because some of y'all ain't saved like you should. I'm so saved that I do not agree that Jesus was just a good man or just a prophet and he won the son of God. Jesus is God in the flesh. Hold on. See, till you preach and start bringing him back into the story, your sermon sounds like music. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. To say its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. Y'all don't love me. It's the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first Love me, touch your neighbor, say, hang in there. Trust me, hang in there. They said, King, we respect you. And we are not careful to answer thee in this matter, which means we're going to choose our words wisely. But in verse 17, then you can sit and we'll keep reading verses 18 through after this verse. But even when you sit down, your mouth better stay up. If it be so. God whom we serve is able 
to deliver us from this burning fiery furnace when I say this Dr. Kevin if it makes sense just give me a quick wave and if it don't give me a quick wave here it goes for 30 people who will catch it they just said without God telling them anything no angel no prophecy he didn't promise he was going to do nothing but they said, our God, you're going to miss it, is able to deliver us from this burning fiery furnace. They did not say he'll put the fire out. They didn't say he won't let me go in. They said, everything you're going to do, do it, but I bet I come out of it. And now, what they're saying is, do what you're going to do. And when you see me come out of it, leave me alone. Look at someone that be a skitikara. Look at someone that left and right and tell them, I wish they get it over with now. I wish they get it over with. Now, I didn't write this. What I'm about to say now is coming straight from God. This ain't in my sermon. But God said, for you that stood up and you're actually believing the word of God, he said, Satan has one more week to deal with you. And then I'm going to bring you out. You The Lord could have left us in there 30 more years. But here he is telling you, countdown, seven, six, five, four, three. You've been going through it for years. One more week won't hurt you. If you knew you were going to get a check of a million dollars in seven days, you wait. And you'll let them possess the car. Take it. Go on, take it. Repossess it. If you knew you were going to definitely get a million dollars cash and your cheat, cheat, and your cheating boyfriend said he's leaving, you'd be like, leave now. <laughs> See, because it's the broke you that loved him. Not the financial freedom. In the, all right, I'm almost back. You're loving people from the level of your struggle, but let's come back. If it be so, our God, who we serve, Lisa is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Then they have the nerve to say, and he will, forget the furnace, deliver us out of your hand. Oh, King, what that means for a screamer is you better get it this time because you ain't going to get a second chance at this. Be seated. Keep your devices open or your eyes on the screen. I want to read from verses 18 through 30, then I'm going to fly my kite. Verse 18, look at the screen, look at your device. Don't sit near nobody that's talking to you about anything but this message. But if not, see y'all missed that. They went from being sure to now telling the king, we don't even care if he don't deliver us. I'll praise him if I never get a million dollars. I'll praise him if I never get married. But if not, I'll try. But if not, see, we need another level of worshipers that ain't reserving the praise until the thing is done. They're praising God on the side of it ain't done yet. will bless the Lord y'all gonna really help me preach and his praises shall but if not be it known unto thee O king we will not serve your little g gods nor will we worship the golden image that you have set up and erected I guess I could put this in there and give, take some liberty to say something that makes sense for two preachers who will get up and say amen who don't think you the baddest thing in the world. 
but that you can be taught something. Catch this, all of your apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers, archbishops, bishops, pontificators, emeritus, whatever your status may be in the Lord's church, the biggest title, the smallest membership. I want to talk to all of you. And I want five of you to jump and catch this. I refuse to serve a God that I have to stand up. Y'all going to catch that. There was a passage in the scripture where those Phil Philistines was able to take our visible God in the form of the Ark of the Covenant. They took him to their sanctuary. They placed him near their God called Dagon. All right, y'all. And God was not uncomfortable in their church. He was upset that they were giving another God credit instead of him. See, you didn't like that. If he didn't want to be stolen, he'd have killed them when they touched him. He said, take me. And he allowed himself to be taken from a group that got too familiar with who he is. He got to beg you to clap, beg you to jump, beg you to come to your own holy convocation. He left. God left. I'm trying to teach something serious. He allows himself to be taken there. And when they have church and they're jumping and doing whatever praise they do because false people do praise a false god. You read that with Elijah. They got on top of the altar. They cut themselves. They scream. They praise. They yell. But their God wouldn't answer. They have church just like us except they serve a God that can't respond. When they gave Dagon all that praise, God didn't do nothing. They left the church building, closed the doors, read the text, came back the next day, and God had slapped their God on the floor. Instead of them serving our God, they picked their God up. Let me help you, Lord. And they did it before the church got full. Hurry up, deacons. Come on, let's pick them up. They erected their God and had another great service. God's blessing them because of his presence, but they're giving the glory to another God. The next day, they closed the church doors. This side ain't moved yet. When they closed the door, God said, I'm going to make sure it's going to take time for them to pick you up. I'm going to cut off your hands. I'm going to cut off your head. And, and then, oh, y'all didn't. When they got up, they saw God decapitate. Should we close the church? And they got so nervous. I wish y'all can follow me. That they actually had a committee for 10 for who screen that said we need to get rid of their God. They gave away the wrong God. Oh, y'all don't like this. Y'all believe God didn't want to be where he was going. He wanted to be where he was because he wanted to teach where he was going. Don't you ever treat me in a familiar way like that. The reason why God killed that man, I wish I had a preacher helping me preach. I wish Tim Newton would just tell me, go on and preach the thing. When that boy Uzzah touched that ark, he died. Now, Dr. Williams, our biblicist, can give you all the theoretical reasons why he died. But I'm going to make it plain to you why he died. You ready? God would not let the scripture be written that a man caught him. Oh, yeah. It's now unto him that can keep us from falling. Oh, y'all don't. Uh, if you got to serve a God that can't keep his lights on, how in the world you think he going to keep your lights on? Now unto him. Shepherd mother, they gave us our God back. And I want to say this to God tonight. For about 200 out of all of you that are here who need a miracle, who will scream, I want him to know tonight, don't look at everybody, just look at us. Welcome home. 
And if you come back to his, he'll meet you at yours. And if he don't like where you're living, he'll qualify you to go somewhere else. I need a God that can do for me what no one else. We're going to get a plethora of miracles in about the next 17 minutes or so. Verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. Form of the visage was changed. His face started changing. Y'all help me preach, three of you. Against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times more than what it was already heated. It was already burning fiery. What is it now? Then he called the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. After this, I'll get on the express because y'all look a little laid back today. But I want to say this from verse 20 and see 10 of you jump for me and for the pastors, then you'll be blessed. And that's this. They couldn't just put them in. They needed somebody strong to help them because some of y'all are messing with people you ain't strong enough to deal with. It takes a lot to bind some of us. So Satan is assigning to some of you who God's about to bless the strongest people, the strongest spirits he's ever released. And the reason why they're strong and you can do nothing about it is these spirits are in people you love. I think I just lost the whole church. If it was a strong stranger, you'd have knocked him out. But because it's your mama, your son, your daughter, you'd be like, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Satan's new plot is I must use who they love. And because you love them, even though you're not talking to me, you have to let them finish doing what they do. Uh-oh, watch out. I felt that. You've got to let them see that you are not just a commoner. I know I'm your mother, but I'm God's prophet. I know I'm your daddy, but I'm a bishop in the Lord's church. The Lord said, let them finish what they're doing. If you've ever said this, then you ought to scream because then you're about to be blessed. Lord, you, mm, if it was anybody else. If you ever said that at any given moment, mm, Lord, you better thank God. If you ever said anything while you were hurt, if I didn't love you. Look at your neighbor and tell him, go through it just to get to it. Make it seven times hot. I'll be with you in a minute, Sean. He commanded the most mighty men of the army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Yes, sir. Then these men were bound in their coats. Y'all not talking to me, you're talking to each other. Don't let the enemy get in and mess up your time now. Whatever they got to say, they can say right at the end of the message. They want to go eat, but they don't want to go with you in the furnace. They want to go to the mall, but they don't want to go with you to court. They want to go everywhere. I need somebody who wants to go through hell with me. Everybody gets an unction to call you 
just when you received the miracle check. You were in my spirit. Today when I cash the check, perfect timing. You just got a new car. I wish we could hang out. But I ain't got no car. They heard you got the new house. That's why they say, where you going for Thanksgiving? You don't have to spend this holiday alone. I'll meet you at your house. They never invite you to theirs. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm going to have enough after a week for people to be jealous of me. Just go and tell them. Tell them I'm going to understand it. Tell them they were jealous before I got it. So they, might as now, so they might as well be jealous now that I have it. And when they talk about you, tell them you got the right to feel that way. Almost there, Bishop Wortham. Verse 22, therefore, because the king commandment was urgent, the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire, I need to act this out, then I'm going to my notes. The flame, the flame of the fire, the flame of the fire slew the men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Can I use you? Can I use you? Get behind me. Get behind me. Can you stand? Well, no, you're working. Come up. Ain't nobody going to break bad now. Come on up. Stand there. You are the furnace. All right? You hear me? So I'm coaching you. Excuse me. These two, one on one side, one on the other, have been ordered by your king to bind me up. Act like you're binding me. Stay there. Woo and you're taking me to the fire. You're going to put me in there. I am dressed. I'm going to see who scream. I am dressed to die quickly because of the material I'm wearing. Let me make it plain for slow folk. Some of you, they're trying to kill you because they got a lot of material on you. They put the quickest flammable material, hosiery, pantyhose, stockings, things that should stick to your skin, hats, coats. I'm dressed to die. As y'all get there, take me like you're angry. The door opens for you to throw me in, and the fire does something else. What happens, now stand there. I'm going to show you how to do this. Stand there. You be me. What happens is, the fire, I'm going to run. Instead of burning who's in front of it, goes around oh y'all whoever's been doing it behind your back they about to get it come on hold on hold on hold on, hold on. the fire took on its own nature and let them in without burning and burned y'all without going in Some of you are about to get what you served because you're carrying out orders from a hater that you shouldn't be listening to. I'm just doing what I'm told to do. No, no. Y'all can go back. Y'all got to go because y'all got first de de degree burns. Now, Bishop. I did something that you probably would preach better than I 
And after this, I'm going to read my last seven verses, read two paragraphs, and fly my kite. But let me say this and see if any of them will jump for me or three of you. You saw me go over to the gentleman and whisper in his ear. I called him fire. I believe that before they got thrown in it, that the Lord had a meeting with the situation. Don't stand up if you ain't going to speak now. And the Lord told the fire, you still fire. And you're going to burn, but you ain't going to burn what's mine. Which one is yours? The one that's bound. Which one is yours? The one that's dressed to fry early. Which one is not yours? The one that's dressed real nice. Don't praise, don't shout. Look at everybody that run and scream like we retarded. But when I think, Fire did what it does. But even your situation needs orders from God. See, some of you are screaming in your mind, mm, that don't work. If you drowning in the pool, silence gonna make you drown now. The lifeguard needs to hear help. I told you tonight is a sound wave. We see no panic. They didn't try to get out of it. There's no Greek and Hebrew words or Aramaic for wiggling, running. They basically said, let's get it over with. Because either two things are going to happen. Either he's going to deliver us or he's not. For my three millionaires now who scream, either way, he's still God. See, whatever happens to me, as long as my situation brings glory to God, I'm good. Some of you, God gets glory by delivering you. Others, he gets glory by leaving you in it. It pleased him to bruise his son. It pleased him. <laughs> it pleased him. As long as what's happening to you and with you pleases God, let it be. I can't get to it. But at the end of your situation, God's going to bring you out. My hoop is almost there, so let me finish reading. I'm ahead of myself. These three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, verse 23, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was a star night and rose up in haste, and he spake, I'm going to holler in a bee in a minute, and said unto his counselors, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, true that. Oh, y'all, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, y'all act like y'all ain't from the hood. True old king. He answered and said, Lord, I see four men loosed, walking in the fire. They ain't trying to get out. They enjoying seeing somebody not being able to burn, being in it. Sometimes you got to enjoy what you in because what killed others will not kill you. The whole thing is God's entertaining you with a negative situation. Walking in the midst of the fire. Make sure you're reading it. They have no hurt. 
and the form of the fourth, I'll let you preach that too, is like the Son of God. Go on, 26, 27, let me read my notes. Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and see he didn't get close because he just saw his boys get burnt. So, <laughs> See, some folk going to know to stop playing with you by what happens to others. They're going to be like, you know what? Maybe he is a man of God. To Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High, God, come forth! Come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth. It doesn't say out. It says of the midst. Of the midst. Of the fiery furnace and the princes, governors, captains, kings, counselors being gathered together. They saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Y'all praising at the right moment. Nor was a hair of their hair singed. Neither were their coats changed. Nor was the smell of fire on them. You that are watching in Florida, hold on. Pastor's coming. Uh -huh. 28, 29, 30, then I close by going to my notes. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, blessed be the God of Shadrach. Boy, I want to run. Blessed be the God of Meshach. Blessed be the God of Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trust in him I will trust in the Lord I will trust in y'all think I done lost my anointing huh I will trust in the Lord till I oh, oh, oh. I will trust in oh, no, 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 no. I will trust in the Lord hey, ooh, I trust in the Lord till I yeah 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 yeah, yeah. they changed the king's word yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Y'all don't want me to preach yet, but he's wonderful. We just having little waves. I'm coming. Counselor. Mighty God. Y'all find something to call him on your own. Tell the neighbor, get a, a, get a nice name for God. He's a kind savior. Heart fixer. Mind regulator. Burden bearer. Heavy low care. All right. If you've been saved over five years, tap five people with that sanctified thing and tell them he's a mighty, 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 mighty God. Yeah. Mighty God. That's enough. That's enough. Yielded their bodies that they may not serve nor worship any God except their own God. Verse 30, 
Last verse. In this verse, if you catch the word, I'm about to holler on you, be blessed. Then the king. Your promotion is after you get out of what you're in. And what you're not going to scream over, then I'm going to calm you down for 10 minutes of my hoop. But 30 of you scream on this. God is going to make who did it to you promote you. Just grab somebody and tell them I'm on my way up. No, tell them like you come from a Pentecostal apostolic background and tell them I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Then the king, the one who tried to kill me is now offering me a better salary. Which means I wasn't supposed to go look for another job in the new kingdom. I'm supposed to get it where you tried to kill me. Look at somebody if they're talking to you and they're friendly and, not, and, and they're not an assassin. Tell them I'm so glad I stayed. I was ready to leave. But I'm so glad I didn't let my feelings get the best of me. I'm so glad I sat under good enough preaching to understand that when the devil starts messing, God starts blessing. I'm so glad I can hear Paul say, be steadfast. <laughs> Unmovable. Always abounding. I'm stuck there. That the king promoted Shadrach. Me, Shaq. I'm going to read my two paragraphs and I'm flying. And Abednego. And he put them over the people that set them up. With all the threats, with the fire being heated, with being dressed to die quickly. If they did not go through what they went through and was pushed in the furnace, they would have never known what I'm about to give you, which is my topic. And 50, y'all better jump and yell. And that is, if you're looking for the Lord, he's in there. Look somebody and tell them, I made it because the Lord was in it with me. The Lord is in there. He's where your trials are, not where your new house is. He's where eviction was, not where elevation lodges. Elevation is a part of the situation you survived. Bishop, after this little dialogue, you can take the mic and you and Bishop Newton can preach the rest of it because I'm sure y'all got it now. But Judges chapter 16, verse 20, I just want to do a little cross-reference. And if you catch it, jump for me. You don't jump much unless the Lord really hits you. Then you shout. But you got to learn to give it to God when you don't feel it. Because 80% of my praise ain't got no feelings attached. 80 of mine's are sacrificial. Y'all ain't talking. Bishop Wortham, help me look at this. And she said, I know it looks like I got off the beat path. The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. This is Delilah who tricked Samson into telling her where his strength lie. He cut his hair and all of that. The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, now this is where I do want somebody who loves the Bible to get happy. I will go out as I do at other times before and just shake myself. Uh -huh. Which means I'm so familiar with God, uh -huh. I know I'm going to get out of this. But look at the next word. He did not know that the Lord departed from him. Oh, y'all are going to miss it. Huh. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
You know how many pastors and preachers are leading and God ain't there? They still hooping, hollering, wearing crosses and blades. And the Lord is like, I ain't going with you. Because if you can't meet me in the furnace, I'm not going to meet you at the revival. I don't, I don't understand. How you want God to move for you and you don't know how to move for him? This text suggests that God, and this text gives me the liberty for 10 hundred of you that will yell that God can slip out and you think he's still there yeah. so he leaves you with a feeling but not his presence here <laughs> the Lord is omnipresent he's everywhere but for ten of us who want to hear good preaching I know he's everywhere, but sometimes I don't feel like he's with me. Now, Bishop, somebody need to talk to me. You, Reverend Dr. Preacher, we all know Samson got his strength back, but there's no scripture saying God came back. Oh, you thought his strength was just connected to God. No, the strength is connected to the covenant about don't cut his hair, don't drink, don't lie. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. See, some of you looking, that's why you're the greatest preacher in your city, but nobody's joining, and it leaves you in the quandary. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Maybe I should go to another city and try. No, no, maybe you need to ask God be with you in the city you in. The thing is, you're trying with your strength. But when God is with you, you don't even have to cross every T and dot every I. He'll just send people that want to follow your leadership because you recognize it ain't about you. I know your church, this building, is going to be overpacked. I know that. I don't know it prophetically, even though I know it by that also. I know it factually, and I'll tell you how. And if two of your members ask me scream loud and somebody up here scream, you will see it. Give God a couple of months. God said, I had to let the bad news get out first. Bad draws more people than good. Good news is too dull. It's too boring. You have to survive something for folk to come see the survivor. Where you should have been assassinated, you're about to ascend. Tell somebody, tell them I'm about to ascend. Now I'm about to close and rock this boat right here. And I'm closing. Let me hear B. The Hebrew boys don't know that God's in that furnace. I still never got a high five or you preaching though Bishop Newton did say this is great but maybe you tell me this again did the Hebrew boys invite God into the furnace or was it the challenge of Nebuchadnezzar's statement most of you said because they praised God and they did because they said if God is not able he's still God that's a high praise and God inhabits that was a good approach but the first person that invited God was the one that said who is this God uh oh hold on. uh oh hold on. look how quiet look at the young people acting deep they waiting on the hoop while they fail in school get out of here didn't show up because of your praise he showed up to prove to your haters that's mine if anyone says this after this week you be sure to know that you're going to be wealthy if they say anything like did you get your car yet are you married did you run around that church again how much money did you give all they got to do is question your relationship with God and he walks with me let me hear that B. I might go there. And, and he talks with me. And he tells me, 
time is on. The jive that we share. I'm going to try to stay over here, but this is where the problem is. As we tarry there. I just want an anointing like Prophet Hall's. You got to go in the furnace. Nobody eats uncooked cake. God put some of you in the oven because it's time for you to rise. Some of you ain't talking and some of us rise better under pressure. I might as well tell you this about a piece of cake. Then you and I hoop together. I want to tell you this about a piece of cake. Then give me a young person who will just start running out of obedience. No feelings, just out of obedience. When you go through the process of the cake, let's get through it. You whip it, you beat it, you mix it. You pour it into something that's measured. Because God will put no more on you than you can bear. He measures it out. But what you don't know, unless you're an old mother that used to cook or old man who knows how to cook, for 30 of you who will yell, is the oven was heated before you started. The beating is not the complete. The whooping is not it. After you've been whipped and flipped and mixed and tossed and turned and poured, you got to be put into something. And once you rise to the occasion and they pull you out, I will somebody catch it, then you have to cool off. God can't serve some of you, the people, till you cool off. If we try to pull you out while you're hot, you'll break into pieces. You got to cool off. Let me hear that beat. They went in. I might as well tell you all the songs that Mother Williams and them used to sing. And my mom and my grandparents and great grandparents, because I knew all three of them. And if anybody knows anything about these songs, you ought to scream because you're close to coming out the oven. And that's this. One of them old devotionals was, I will trust in the Lord. Y'all ain't talking. Another one of those songs for screamers is, throw me overboard. Another song for y'all that's not screaming is in the word of God. Place. Them songs said that he walks with me. You almost there, boy. Talks with me. Testify to somebody that's already heated with you and tell him he tells me that I am his own and the judge. Oh, that's too dull for me. Come here and how the joy that we share as we tarry. Leave me as we tarry there. None other has ever known. Some people wish they were you, that's why they're scammers. But some people can't stand you and want to kill you, that's why they're schemers. I'm about to go to church. Some people are studying you close enough to be you in your absence. I want five people now, I don't need nobody else in this packed church. But some of y'all need to tell God tonight, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Ah, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I got five minutes, not my mother, not my father. 
But oh, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. So you either have scammers or schemers. Either way, you are worth being imitated and attacked. But I want you, you that are tired now, ask yourself, were you tired at 10 o'clock when you were going to the club? And then you will know what God you truly serve. Your enemy made a drastic mistake. Down to my last notes. The mistake they made was they made the temperature just right for you to rise. Because if they didn't do what they did to you, you would not have known how much you could actually take. Some of us Talk to me, Father, you cannot believe how much we were able to take, especially in the past five years. Don't y'all act sanctified. You know you felt like serving another God, selling some weed, shacking because two checks for one place is better than us paying for our own. But something on the inside kept on telling you, hold on. In three minutes, I'm going to lose my mind, but tell three or four people around you real quick, hold on. Look at them. What am I holding on to? Hold to his hand. Watch it. God's unchanging hand. I'm almost there. I'm coming. Build your hopes. I said, build your hopes. I said, build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Last thing. Before I get into my own enjoyment, I want to say this to now the group of you who caught the gist of the dessert tonight. Catch this and then yell loud on your own. My subtopic of this sermon was do the math. Folks say he lying. No, I ain't. Do the math. It started off with the Lord is in it. My holler is in do the math. In order in math for there to be a solution, there has to be a problem. I'm talking to only 10 who won't stop talking. And certain people see you in the problem and they keep subtracting from you. But I'm here to tell some of you God's about to multiply you. They say, solve this problem. What does your problem equal? Now, King Nebuchadnezzar, then we're going to preach now, he failed math. What did I say? He failed. Who failed math? Whoever knew the right answer, your bill's being paid right now. I'm finding out. Do the math. You that stay quiet, you subtracted that. Death and life. You better start using it. Nebuchadnezzar. Newton Jr. 
he fails math. Because he said, did not I put three men in the fire? And when he went to check on what he put in there, he counts again. He asked somebody double check his mathematics. Let me help somebody who was screaming for yourself. Because somebody already said she ain't going to come back to church. She ain't going to make it out of this. Somebody can't do the math. Then when you show up, the liars look at each other. Look who just walked in. Yeah, yeah. Somebody. Nebuchadnezzar said, did not I? Can I hear that B again? Boy, that sound good. Put three men in I'm playing with Gene Two Keys. The fire. But lo, I see four men in the fire. Let me do it one more time. Did not I put in three men in the fire? But lo, I see four men in the fire. The problem was, then let's go to church. 20 of you push me. He called Jesus the fourth. When Jesus was the first. Uh, my Lord. He put Jesus as number four. I had a church. You put three in. Jesus had to get there first to have a meeting with the situation. Ah, Lord. And uh, he told the fire. I got three boys coming in to your situation. Make sure you let them know that I am their God. Get a preach partner and make that the person you coming out of what you're in with. And say, neighbor, what you don't understand is everything that we're in. God's already been there. And while he was not talking to you, he was talking to the situation. I'm so glad that God knows all about me. I trust the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my might. Don't you touch nobody that ain't happy right now touch somebody and say neighbor it's hard to be burned by fire 
when you're already on fire. Tell them all you got to do is tell the devil. Uh, I, it's just like fire. Shut up in my bone. I'd rather have Jesus. there shake two more people and say neighbor catch on fire come tell them in seven days whatever you're in you're coming out of it and I want to congratulate you because what you're in never got in you how did you come out with a smile on your face how did you come out with joy in your heart? How did you come out with peace in your mind? Y'all got to preach to somebody and say, I'll tell you how. I kept my mind, stayed on Jesus, cut the gain up everywhere. Let's have church. I said, tell him I kept my mind. Jesus. And if anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Tell him I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. Oh, I've got Jesus on my side. Yeah! Yeah! 
neighbor, Prophet Hall is not stealing this. He saw this with Bishop McKissick, but I feel like using it tonight. Get two neighbors, grab them by the hand, look them eyeball to eyeball, ask them, have you been through anything? Should you have died already? Should you've lost your mind? Should you walked away? Tell them what did you do? Tell them I hung in there. And if you're holding on to that person right now, shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. Good night, Rudolph McKissick. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. And tell your neighbor, I'm coming out. I'm a close. church back in Orlando, the Shabbat Church, 1403, place of passion. I make them say this to one another at least two times, and I want to do it here. And when you tell it to the person, if they don't catch it, don't get mad. Just come out of what you're in and leave them in there until they're well done. But I want you to grab a neighbor's hand with aggression and tell them, it's all right now. She don't want no music. I feel my grandmother. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost is here right now. I said the Holy Ghost is here right now. What am I touching? Look at how I close. Look at me. This ain't offering. Look at me. They should have been cooked. Burnt. To a crisp. They went into what we call in Brooklyn an incinerator. They were supposed to be cremated. But God went in there, he's not fourth, he's first. And he made himself absent to you to make himself present to your situation. I don't want to talk to you. I need to talk to it. It needs rules. You have no say. You're going in there whether you like it or not. But how you come out is determined by the meeting I have with your situation. Look at me and look like you trust him because I'm there. Two things, Bishop, if it makes sense, wave at me, whichever Bishop. One is this. They didn't get loose after they came out. They were loose in it. Nor did they ask to be let out. 
they were going to stay in it as long as they could. Reason why they didn't want to come out of it is he was in it. Oh, y'all just, I want to be where the Lord is. He put three men in bound. When he opened it, saw them loose. This is for a young man to run. We, we got a lot of folk who have ministries, and we have a lot of people that have a message. They just don't have God. That's why they are frustrated preachers. But capture this, and some young man scream at me. The one he didn't put in it, he never dressed him, and he never bound him. So the only way they got out of bondage is Jesus had to say, turn around, boys. Let me take this stuff off. Because I can no longer see you in that situation. Oh, yeah. Took off whatever was holding them and told them, let's worship. You don't see that they worshiped, but I'll show you. And if only five of you, I've been stuck on three and five all night. If three or five of you scream loud, you'll get a blessing. And that's this. When they went in and fell down, bowing is worship. They did in the furnace what they wouldn't do for King Nebuchadnezzar. He said, bow down. Because worship starts with bowing. Proscuneo. Some say proscuneo to change your posture. They worship by bowing even while bound. I'm bound, but I'm still worshiping. I'm angry, but I'm still worshiping. I'm hurt, but I'm still worshiping. The Lord is in here now. He doesn't tell us who picked them up, but you can take for granted. Whoever's in there, help them get up. And he probably told them, you finally saw me. I'm talking to three of you. And he probably said, we've been serving you. Never seen you in our life. How come we can see you now? He said, because you're in the fire. I'm more visible in what's trying to kill you than I am in what's trying to bless you. When you get blessed, you start paying attention to the blessing. But when you're being attacked, you pay attention to God. Hold somebody's hand, but make sure it's just not the closest hand. Don't, and don't make nobody want to fight you. Because here's my clothes. I looked up the word promote. Some folk pronounce it wrong. They said tisselok, because there's a T-S-E. And so they say tissa, but it's salak. The T is silent. It's salak. That word promotes a lock. Where the root word, you get the word tisla or tisla, like a tisla car is called salah. So when Eve is pulled out of Adam, it says God took out a rib, and the word rib is tisla, which means he took something out of his side to stand by his side, similar. It means nothing about side or rib. That word salah, for one loud multi-millionaire simply means someone out of you to make you who you need to be, right? What it's saying is when you get the right person by your side, you prosper. You prosper. You prosper. So God gave Adam Eve to help him prosper. So salak, salak, tisalak, simply means that when the king promoted them, salak, what he did was said, from this day forward, you will never see a broke day in your life. You will never pay for insurance. Everything in the kingdom is free to you. And a matter of fact, you're going to be so promoted that we're going to start serving your God. Y'all ain't to Once. God gets his glory, you get your stuff. I'm closing there. Once God gets his glory, you and I 
can get our stuff. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things. You're holding, you're holding, yes you are. You're holding the hand of, 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 of a debt-free child of God. Yes, you are. Can I get a piece of paper? Anybody still use paper? Can I have a piece of it? All secretaries should always keep a notebook. Yes. Oh, let me say something to you. This is not for you. Lift your right hand. God is, give me a usher. God is going to, so that you can enjoy this elevation you just received, God is going to himself cut you from your neck down. You don't complain much. You don't tell, you don't allow pity to come out of you often. You have worked through it. But we refuse to see you elevated to the bishopric and then die from heart failure. Thank you. Thank you. I don't lay hands much, but I'm going to touch you tonight. I'm going to ask God to give you a new ticker. And I'm going to ask God also to release some property to your life with all of the revenue to build what you need debt free. You're gonna need a young man working with you cause he'll make your load light. I see women around you working but God said I'm sending a young man. And I'm gonna make your load light saith the Lord. Bring him to your bishop for investigation. Do what you're supposed to do. But God says, I have a young man that I've equipped to leave where he is, to stand by your side and to hold up your arms. God said, I'm going to reward you for the past 22 years. I'm going to show you a miracle. When I touch this man, all of you that know he's coming out of his fiery furnace, start screaming now in the name of Jesus. You may not be able to read this because it's chicken scratch. I'm giving this to you. If this makes sense, and we'll clean it up, if you can read it, you then rip it up and jump on it like it's done. I normally don't prophesy the leaders and make them go in through the motions, but for the past three churches I've been to, I prophesied to every leader of the church what to do for that final miracle to take place. Um, I just want you to read it. May not make sense. You can even show it. Well, can I show it to you first? Then, then you can tell me whether I can give it to your son. It's chicken scratch, but read through it. Can I give that to him? Your name shall live forever. And the Lord told me, the name will not live 
in a museum. The name will live by what's on the bottom of this paper. That amount is coming in the first phase. I want to say three words, then we're about to move and do the will of God. Um, let, me, let me quickly ask you, how do you two know one another? Yes. Say it loud. Say it loud. Don't be cool. I need you to understand that before the days of podcast close, your wife is TV ready. No, no, somebody's jealous. Your story should have been started before you married him. This story is over seven years late. If this man pushes your vision like Joseph had to help let Mary give birth to Jesus, God said, every dream that he helps you fulfill, I'll give him $5 million for himself. Sometimes the success of the husband is in what the wife gives birth to. Y'all can write the book together. But this podcast telling women how God can bless you and turn a nightmare into a dream. God says, tell her I'm giving her six months to get it rolling and tell her I'm already in it. Look at somebody and tell them the Lord is in it. Can I say something to you? I saw you today at a restaurant that I went to get food, right? We shook hands. We loved on each other. I wore the tie that I bought from you tonight. Told you that I would, whether it matched or not. Because I had a blue tie for this, but I made a promise. But let me tell you something. Something I've not seen in your area, the Lord said, tell him. He doesn't have to run the church unless he feels. But if he gets really excited, tell him I'm going to franchise him. Tell him. Hold on. I got to let him see God is in it. God said, when you run, 
tell you this, and I hope 80 people scream for you. Tell him he's going to be a shop on wheels. I'm going to give him three vans with a brand on the side. People are going to buy into his company and get the same van with the same brand, and you will be in at least 30 states on wheels. They will do measurements, they will do fittings, they will do everything from van to the man. God said, from the van to the man. From the van. Look at somebody and tell them the Lord is in it. Last time you touch someone who act like they don't want to be touched by you. Next time choose who's honored to touch you. To the woman with the black mask on, can you just pull it down a little bit, then you can put it back up. Did you know about an hour and a half ago I mentioned something about jail and prison? Do you know anybody in jail? You're about to get a call from somebody who was incarcerated. They know you. You have prayed for this person before. You have not seen this person in years. They're coming out looking for you because, wait a minute, something just hit me, all right. Because they were done a bad deal and now they're coming into a settlement. They are gonna give you quite a bit of money, dear. And because you don't know them, when you get it, give me some and pass to Kevin. And in that order. Because you're about to get money you don't expect. Can you do me a favor? I was going to do it. I want you to take your two fingers like this, right? And you can do it on me first. And act like you're looking for my pulse. You feel it? All right. I want you to do that to someone else. And when you do, I want you to say, be gone. When you say be gone, what would have totally taken this person out of here was the loss of the area you're about to touch. In about six, eight days, what was there trying to grow is going to be totally dissipated. Touch him on his throat, right on the side of his throat. What's in my soul? Junior, look at me. I know you feel the presence of God. Look at me. 22 years ago, I was at the height of my hoop ministry. When I say that, I was a young man who had a voice that was phenomenal. I went to the doctor. The doctor told me, you have polyps on your vocal cords. Preseke por that's what he told me. He said, he said to me, if you don't stop preaching and talking for a little while, they're going to become cancerous on your throat. I said, okay. I went to God and I told God, I cannot preach for you no more because you have abused my throat. The Lord then told me, for you who don't believe, he said, Todd, go back to that revival tonight. I just left the doctor and finish your revival. I took a red cloth with me because while preaching, I was coughing up blood. While I was preaching at the revival, you heard about coughing up blood. Yeah. Nobody could see it except Bishop Green. 
Bishop Green said, you want to cancel the revival? I said, yes, I do, but I can't. I said, the Lord said, no. Hurting, whispering, not talking all day till it's time to preach. This is not God. Then the Lord came in my hotel room, the Courtyard Marriott in New Carrollton, Maryland. And he said, Todd, it's only on one vocal cord. It's not on both. He says, I'm going to give you one of my chords. I said, what? I have only one functioning vocal cord. The other one is paralyzed until I preach. Now I got doctor reports for this. And when I preach, I challenge God, because it's his voice, to keep preaching higher, higher, because it's his. Because the enemy attacked God's gift. Your voice will not just go around the United States. It will reach the United Kingdom. I don't know what this means. Come touch him again, Bishop, because I won't. This is what it means, and then y'all will scream loud. The Lord says, tell him this so he'll know it's me. So the left chord is for singing, but the right chord is mine. Y'all ain't talking. Sure is. That means he going to preach. God said, Todd, what they don't know is I'm doing it now. Last time, this time hold the hand of a person that you want things to happen for them in 24 hours. I know we've got seven days, but maybe God will put some speed for a few of us. Maybe he'll expedite for some of us. My eyes are closed because I'm beginning to see things that I probably should not be seeing at this time. But blessed assurance, wish I had some old saints, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation, purchased of God. I hear the Lord say, tell Bishop Wortham, don't worry about it. He said, tell him every loss is a gain. He said, tell him I left him here for a reason. Tell him there's actually no replacement for him because of the way that I made him. Tell him I'm going to put angels and I'm going to put warring angels besides everything that has his name on it. He said, but tell him without telling him, there's only one area that I have to do war in to make sure the devil knows he will not burn. He will not smell like smoke. Not a hair on his hair will be singed. You're about to get a new life. And this is what God told me to quote. Not that this is your age or anything near it. But if your members and people that came and 50 of these members who love him will scream, you're going to get it. God says, and he waited 45 more years to come to Caleb. And he asked Caleb, do you still want your mountain? <laughs> they tried to talk Caleb out of it because they said, you're 85. He said, I feel as young as I was then now. do that but I ask him what were you called as a young man I don't hear Earl I thought he was lying that's why I said I ain't calling him that I'm sorry I respect you too much to call you that God said my hand was on him back then 
Tell him I never left him. Can I have a piece of paper? 